we're talking about CPR for babies. CPR is a skill that every parent and family member must have. CPR is not about bringing somebody to life. It's about circulating blood and therefore oxygen around the body, primarily to the brain. So that if the cause of the baby or child going into cardiac arrest can be fixed, you have given them the best chance possible at a good outcome. We're going to go through the steps of doctors A, B, C, D. D for danger, R for response. S for sending for help, A for airway, B for breathing, C for compressions, and D for defibrillator. We're going to go through each step in detail and then put it all together and show you at the end. D is for danger. You need to ensure that both you are safe, your child is safe, and those around you are safe. You need to think about things like electricity, fire, roads, water, what dangers are around you and your child. Even though it can be very tempting that if your child is injured to run straight to them, it's every parent's instinct to do that. You need to take that split second to make sure that you're okay. Because if you are injured while you're helping your child, you can't help them and they need you. So look around, make sure your surroundings are safe. And if your child is safe where they are, leave them where they are as you go on through the rest of doctors A, B, C, D. However, if their life is in danger where they are, then you must carefully move them no matter what their injuries are. R is for response. We want to know, is your baby or child conscious or unconscious? Because if they are conscious, they do not need CPR. They might still be very sick and need an ambulance coming, lights and sirens, but they do not need you pressing on their chest. So to check for a response in a baby, pick them up, hold them upright in your arms, give them a firm tickle, Annie, Annie, open your eyes, Annie. Tickle their hands, their feet. Annie, Annie, open your eyes. And hopefully we're getting a nice big cry. If she is limp and floppy in your arms, she is unconscious, we move on to the next step. S is sending for help. You need to call emergency services. In Australia, the number is triple zero. In New Zealand, 111. Make sure that you are familiar with the number to call an ambulance in your country. In Australia, what we encourage you to do is download the Emergency Plus app. You can dial triple zero through the app by simply pressing the button and it will give the operator the latitude and longitude of where you are. Because often, even though, you know, we think we always know where we are, what happens if you're at a friend's house? You know what suburb they're in, but maybe not the exact address. Maybe you're at the park. Maybe you're out bushwalking somewhere. Being able to give the operator the latitude and longitude of where you are is so important so emergency services can find you quickly. The important thing to remember when you're speaking to the operator is to answer their questions. Tell them where you are and what is wrong very, very clearly and don't hang up. They will be sending an ambulance to you while they keep you on the line, instruct you what to do and ask you questions as needed. Make sure that if there is somebody with you, you send them outside to wait for the ambulance and bring them in. Ensure that pets are locked outside if possible and ensure that the front door is unlocked and the paramedics can get to you and your child. If you don't have your phone with you, get help any way that you can. Shout until the neighbours hear you, bang on doors, flag down a car, do whatever you need to do to get help, but don't delay giving CPR. A is for airway. 
we need to clear and open the airway. Your airway is the tube that goes from your nose and mouth down into your lungs called the windpipe or the trachea. And in adults, it's quite uh, large in diameter and quite firm, a bit like a garden hose. But when it comes to babies and children, the airway is really quite soft and floppy. So in a baby, if you imagine it's more like a plastic straw. In a child, it's a little bit bigger, but still quite floppy and quite narrow. So we need to remember that babies and children can block their airways very easily. When we are unconscious, our airway loses its protection. All of our reflexes and muscles that keep it open are no longer there. Their head will flop forward and their airway will kink off like a straw. So we need to come along and open it. In a baby, it's different to a child. If we tilt their head back, we will actually block off their airway. So the position that we need to put a baby in is what we call a straight or neutral position. Put your hand on their head, gently pull their head until it is nice and straight. With your thumb and forefinger, hold them on the hard part of the chin and lift that chin upwards towards the ceiling. Keep holding the airway open because as soon as you let go, they're going to flop down and block their airway again. Keep holding it while we go on to the next step. B is for breathing. We need to check for normal or abnormal breathing. We're going to continue to hold open their airway. Once again, we're going to look, listen and feel. We're going to look for rise and fall of the tummy in a baby. We are listening for air coming out and we are feeling with our cheeks. And one thing that you will also note in a baby or a child who has abnormal breathing is their colour will change. You know what is normal for your child, no matter what colour skin they have. A child with abnormal breathing or a baby with abnormal breathing will be pale, blue or mottled. Trust me, you will know if your child has abnormal breathing. And if they do, we move on to the next step. C is for compressions. If your child is unconscious with abnormal or no breathing, we need to start CPR. We don't check for a pulse because it's not about a heart that has stopped beating. It's about a heart that is ineffectively beating. Make sure that we always have our baby or child on a hard surface. If they're in a cot or a bed and we go to do compressions, we'll bounce them and we won't get a good chest compression. In a baby, we use two fingers in the same position as a child, the centre of the chest over that hard breastbone. Once again, we are pressing down one third the depth of the chest over the hard breastbone in the centre of the chest at a rate of 100 to 120 compressions a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. To do the breaths in a baby, we're going to open their airway. We're going to put our mouth over their mouth and nose. You simply do this to any age where they become too big for you to comfortably do this. While you're holding open the airway, simply put in enough breath from the contents of your cheeks. A puff is all we need. Don't try and force air into the baby's lungs. That can cause damage. One, two. Once we've done our two breaths, we move straight back into compressions. If you think that your breaths haven't worked, don't waste time doing more. It is simply 
two quick attempts at breath and then straight back into the compressions. Because remember, if we're wasting time on perfecting our breaths, we are not on their chest pumping that blood around the body. You can use a defibrillator on a baby. As with a child or an adult, one person continues on with CPR, the second person goes and gets the defibrillator. Simply turn it on and listen to it. Remove pads from package and apply to patient's bare chest. For a baby, place one pad in the middle of their chest. Apply pads to patient's bare chest. And the second pad to their back. Apply pads to patient's bare chest. Do not touch the patient. Analyzing heart rhythm. Listen to the defibrillator. Do not touch the patient. Analyzing heart rhythm. Shock advised. Charging. Stay clear of the patient. Deliver shock now. Shock delivered. It is safe to touch the patient. Continue on with CPR. Start CPR. First of all, check for danger. Make sure that you are safe, they are safe, and those around you are safe. Next, check for response. Pick your baby up. Hold them upright in your arms. Annie, Annie, open your eyes. Open your eyes. We need to check to see if they are conscious or unconscious. If they are heavy and floppy in your arms and not responding, they are unconscious, we move on to the next step. Send for help. Call emergency services, ambulance, and ensure that you speak to them calmly, clearly, tell them where you are, what is wrong, don't hang up and follow their instructions. Next, we're going to clear and open the airway. Look in your baby's mouth. If they have vomit, food, or another obstruction, roll them over gently, let that drain out. Don't do any big finger sweeps, you'll push whatever it is further back down. Once clear, roll them back over and open up their airway. Pull their head gently into a straight or neutral position, and with your thumb and forefinger, lift their chin up towards the ceiling. Keep holding this while we move on to the next step, B for breathing. We are going to look, listen and feel. Get down nice and close and for up to 10 seconds, look for rise and fall of the tummy. Listen for air coming out and feel with your cheeks. If they have abnormal or no breathing and they are unconscious, we are starting compressions. First of all, make sure they are on the floor on a hard surface. With two fingers on the hard breastbone in the center of the chest, press down one third the depth of the chest at a rate of 100 to 120 compressions per minute. At a ratio of 30 compressions to two breaths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Open the airway. One, two, and keep going. Thirty to two. If there is a defibrillator available and there is another person with you, send that person to bring back the defibrillator. All you need to do is listen to it, turn it on and follow its prompts. When do you stop CPR? If you are too physically exhausted to continue or you are in danger, if your baby begins to show signs of life and wakes up. 
if another experienced person comes along, such as paramedics come and take over, or the defibrillator tells you to stop. Otherwise, continue on with CPR 30 to 2.